Okay, so this is part way through chapter seven. I've called it 7A and 7B because I think the proof section feels really quite different. Anyway, let's talk about proof. So there are different kinds of proof that you will have in A-level maths. In year one, we will just talk about deduction and exhaustion. And in year two, we come up with something that is called proof by contradiction. So for deduction, again, this should feel quite familiar from GCSE. It's where you're trying to deduce the answer, where it's just, there's not much trick to it, just using things that you might have previously used. For example, if they're talking about even numbers, we would call something like 2K, odd numbers, either 2K plus one or 2K minus one. You know, just building those things up from uh, the language that they give you. Proof by exhaustion is where things get a little bit more interesting. So this is where you want to analyze all of the possible cases. Usually it will be looking at even numbers and odd numbers. Um, or something that's getting a bit more common in recent years has to been to do a, an, an analysis in a different way. Perhaps one less than a multiple of three, a multiple of three and one more than a multiple of three. It's still exhausting all of the numbers, just like we can split every integer into either an odd number or an even number. Zero is even, by the way, because people often ask that because zero can be written in this form. Um, you can also split numbers up into other kinds of groups. If you think about it, think of any integer. It is either a multiple of three, one more than a multiple of three or one less than a multiple of three. You could say it's two more than a multiple of three, but if it's two more than a multiple of three, it's also one less than a multiple of three. So lots of different ways of splitting numbers up into different groups. These are probably the two most common ones that we would come across. And this exam tip we'll probably use in the second one, which is just do something to get started. If you can't have a clue of where to begin, do something and it will usually give you some kind of signal about, ooh, maybe it's connected to this or maybe it's connected to that. So this is an example of a proof by deduction for this first one. It says, prove that the difference between the squares of two consecutive odd integers is always a multiple of eight. So we've got some odd integers here, and there's this word consecutive. Consecutive just means next to each other. So if I had an odd integer 11, a consecutive one is either going to be 13 or 9. It means that they're next to each other if we were going to write them in a list here. So I'm going to say that my first odd integer would be 2k plus 1. I could do my next odd integer as 2k plus 3, or I could do the one before it, which I probably would do. I could say that it's a 2k minus 1, and you could do the algebra with that. Either of these things are going to work. You're always going to produce the same kind of answer at the end. Now, technically, we should say that these are my odd integers, and I should say something like where k is an integer but you don't get penalized for not saying this but i'm going to try and make these as good as possible so we're trying to find the difference between the squares of these things now if i'm finding the square of them i will put this one as a square and this one is a square now i could do the difference like this but obviously this is going to be a negative because this number is bigger than this number so i'm probably going to write this the other way around i'm probably going to take this one put it to the other side and I'll put that subtract sign and we're going to work on this and hopefully come up with it being a multiple of eight. So let's do the expansion of the first bracket. 2k plus 3 squared is going to be a 4k squared. We then get a 6k and a 6k. That is a 12k and a 3 squared is a 9. Let's get this little sentence out of my way. Now I'm going to be subtracting and definitely put big brackets around this. We get a 4k squared, a 2k and a 2k, which is a 4k, and a plus 1. So I think these are the questions in proof that people feel pretty familiar with. They feel like the most like GCSE, and so people don't usually find this kind that stressful. Obviously, all of these things become negatives. So when we subtract, that cancels with this. And I'm just left with 12k minus 4k, which is 8k. And I have the 9 minus the 1, which is plus 8. And you know how to show that something is a multiple of 8. Take out the factor of 8, and we get this. And we can just say, hence, it is, oh, is, is, it is a multiple of 8. And I can say the difference of or well, the difference between the squares and I'm actually just going to write etc etc you don't write etc etc okay you have to write the full sentence to do a proper conclusion there is always a mark reserved for concluding it and saying hence I have proved the statement but I'm just putting etc etc because you don't want to watch me doing this 
Now this again, I think this kind of question technically could have been asked in GCSE, not to kind of stress people out, but proof in GCSE, they do have some tricky questions. We're gonna use this exam tip of to do something because in this one, we tried to show that it was a multiple of eight, it was divisible by eight. We got this lovely eight that came out here. I should have said, by the way, if we did it with a 2k plus one and a 2k minus one, I think it just results in just an 8k. So that's the only difference that it would be. Now, this one, I'm trying to figure out where I can get a six, right? They're just saying n cubed minus n is divisible by six. How am I possibly going to show that? This one, I knew that I could at least substitute some things in and do some maths. I don't really know what to do with this. So what I'm going to do is try and get myself at least one of the marks by doing something. Now, if I have n cubed minus n, it looks like there's only one thing I can possibly do here, which is to factorize. So I'm going to take out a factor of n and I get n squared minus one. Hmm, is there anything else I can do? Well, n squared minus one, you should know, is a difference of two squares. So that's an n plus one and an n minus one. Now, this is going to sound a bit strange, but we talked about this idea of being consecutive, didn't we, before? And we said when we had consecutive numbers, we had like 2k minus one, then we had 2k plus one for the odd numbers and 2k plus three. I wonder if we've got anything going on with that down here, because I think we've got some consecutive numbers. If I rewrite the order of this, I have n minus 1, n, and then n plus 1. I'm still not getting anything, anything to do with 6. Let's have a look at what it means to be divisible by 6. If something is divisible by 6, it should be divisible by two other numbers. It means that it should also be divisible by 2, and it should be divisible by three. If something is divisible by two and three, if it's even and a multiple of three, it's got to be divisible by six because six is two times three. So let's just quickly look at this. This is, this is three consecutive integers. Not odd integers or even integers, just three consecutive integers. So I don't know, maybe I have like four, five, six. I won't do four, five, six because that's obvious. It's going to be a multiple of five. Let's do like seven, eight, nine like this and then maybe i'll do like 14 15 16. now i know that when i have three consecutive integers it is always going to be divisible by two because there's always going to be an even number in there in fact there might even be two even numbers in there that's because there will always be an even number in three consecutive integers and I also know that these set of three numbers, when I multiply them together, will be divisible by three because there's always going to be, at, well, not at least, there's always going to be exactly one number which is divisible by three. So in a set of three consecutive integers, if I'm multiplying them together, I know that one of them will be divisible by three and at least one of them will be divisible by two, meaning that the overall number being multiplied together will be divisible by six. So I'm gonna just write down and I'm gonna move this so that it's not in the way. These are just some of my jottings down. This is three consecutive integers. I'm gonna say either, one or two are divisible by two. And I'm going to say exactly one will be divisible by three. Hence, n minus one, n n plus 1, which is the same as n cubed minus n, is divisible by 2 and 3, so is divisible by 6. Now, you might be like, I would never be able to do that. But now, if you ever see something like this, you might be on that same kind of mind of thinking of like, okay, well, I'm not getting any 6s from here. Is there another way that I can show it? And that might be the same for something like 15. You're trying to show that something is divisible by 15. You could show it's divisible by 3 and it's divisible by 5. Just trying to give you some of these hints with stuff. Now, proof part two, same stuff, just on a different slide. We are going to prove using algebra that n brackets n squared plus 1 is even for all 
this thing that we've got here, it's saying for all members of n, sorry, all uh, n, which are members of the natural numbers. Now, the natural numbers, I always think of them as like the numbers that would have first been found in nature by like Neanderthals. They are literally just like one, two, three, four, etc. They weren't thinking of millions. They weren't thinking of negative numbers and they weren't thinking of zero, although sometimes people do include zero in this. But for now, we're just saying it's the positive integers. Now, this is going to be an example of, if we go back to the original box that we had here, we've done deduction twice. This is going to be an example of a proof by exhaustion here. We're going to try and analyze all of the possible things that could happen. We're going to try and show that this thing is even for all um, all positive integers. Now, it does say using algebra. If I was going to say it wasn't with algebra, I could say, okay, well, if n is even, n squared is even, and n squared plus 1 is odd, and an even times by an odd is still even. I could also then say, well, if n was an odd number, I would have an odd number multiplied by an odd number squared plus 1. And an odd number squared is an odd and an odd plus one is even, so I have an odd times an even, and an odd times an even is an even. Now, if that all sounds like gobbledygook, complete jargon, that's fine. We're going to do it using algebra. But if it didn't say using algebra, you could literally have written down what I had just said there. So I'm going to start off by saying let n be equal to 2k. In other words, it is even. Then n, n squared plus one, is going to be 2k. Doesn't need the brackets, does it? 2k multiplied by 2k squared plus 1. So that's 2k multiplied by 4k squared plus 1, which is 8k cubed plus 2k. If I take a factor of 2 out, I get 4k cubed uh, plus k. Hence, it is even when n is even. That's good. We wanted to show that it was going to be even. Now we're going to let n be equal to an odd number. So I'm going to go with 2k plus 1. So we're going to say let n be an odd number. So n, n squared plus 1. That's going to be a 2k plus 1. And then we're going to have a 2k plus 1 squared plus 1. So it's like what we did on the previous slide. It's just we're having to do it with the evens and with the odds. So 2k plus 1 squared, I'll go a bit quicker with that, that's a 4k squared plus 4k plus 1 plus another one. So that is a 2k plus 1, 4k squared plus 4k plus 2. Now if you wanted to, you could expand the entire thing, but I'll just show you a little algebraic technique that might be a little bit more beneficial for you. We could just look at this thing that we've got here. These all have a factor of 2, so I could take a factor of 2 out of that which would leave me with a 2k squared plus 2k plus 1. And then I have a 2k plus 1 that was from the original bit. I just switched the order of these. So because of this 2 that we've got at the beginning here, we know that it's got to be even. Hence, it is even when n is odd. So then we just need a final conclusion statement, say, so n, n squared plus 1 is even for all, blah, blah, blah. Hence n, n squared plus 1 is even for all n members of the natural numbers. Last question on this is again going to be a proof by exhaustion. It says prove that all square numbers are either a multiple of 3 or one more than a multiple of 3. Well, if we were going to do this with just, I don't know, normal numbers, we can say, OK, great, I've got n squared. How is that going to do anything to it being a multiple of 3? or not a multiple of three. If I did it with even numbers and then odd numbers, you're gonna see very quickly, we don't get anything to do with three. We just get 4k squared, 4k squared plus 4k plus one. We can't get anything to do with this threeness of this question, a multiple of three or one more than a multiple of three. So I'm gonna split my numbers up in a different kind of way. Instead of doing odd even, um, odds and evens, I'm going to do, I'll start off by letting n be equal to a multiple of 3. Okay, so all of the multiples of 3, we're going to see what this works out as. We're going to do the square numbers. So we're going to do 3k, or n squared, is 3k squared, which is 9k squared. And if you want to show it really, obviously, that is 3 times 3k squared. So we can say, hence, a multiple of 3. Now we're going to investigate the other numbers. 
we're going to exhaust this by saying let's n be one more than a multiple of three. So we're going to do n squared, which is 3k plus 1 squared. That is 9k squared. Just expanding these brackets, you get a 3k and a 3k, and we get a plus 1. Now I want to show it's one more than a multiple of 3, because it's not going to be a multiple of 3 here. One more than a multiple of 3. That does look like it's going to be one more than a multiple of 3. I'll make it really clear by factoring the 3 out of that first part, and I'm going to have that plus 1 at the end. So I'm going to say hence, it is one more than a multiple of 3. You can see how this is proof by exhaustion. We're exhausting all of the possible cases. Now for the last one, we can either say that n is equal to 3k plus 2, or we could say that n is equal to 3k minus 1. It really, really doesn't matter. Because if you think of a number that is too bigger than a multiple of 3, so let's think of a multiple of 3 as 9, so 11 is 2 more than a multiple of 3. It's also 1 less than a multiple of 3, because 11 is 1 less than 12. So these two things are representing the same numbers. I guess I'll just do the first one that I've got with the 3k plus 2, but it really doesn't matter which of these you're going to do. So if I do n squared, we would get 3k plus 2 squared, which is 9k squared. We get a 6k and a 6k, which is a 12k, and we get a plus 4 at the end. So if I was going to take a factor of 3, I would have a 3k squared a 4k, I'll put a plus 1 to get a 3, and then there is one more at the end. It would probably be a bit different if we did it with a 3k minus 1, but I wanted to show you it would work with either. So I'm going to say hence, it is one more than a multiple of 3. One more. I don't write very neatly when I'm doing these videos because I'm trying to go as quick as I can. One more than a multiple of three. And then, of course, we need our final conclusion statement. All square numbers are blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to say, so all square numbers are either, and I'm just going to write, et cetera, et cetera, conclusion. Now, you're not going to write that. You're going to write the whole thing to make sure that you get that last mark. So that is all of chapter seven. Proof is kind of hard. Like there's not much for me to tell you with proof other than it's one of these two things. This is the sneakiest thing I've seen them do quite a few times is exhaustion splitting into three cases. And I wanted to show you why it was three cases. It was like, I'm never going to get anything to do with three if I just do it with evens and odds. And this one's very sneaky down here. Again, I wanted to kind of show you that little tip. So I hope to see you in another video soon and um, good luck with all of your studies.